In this problem, we're looking to calculate the entropy change at standard conditions at 298 Kelvin for a given chemical reaction using entropy data for the reactants and products. This uses a variant of Hess's law, like we saw for enthalpies, and we'll see later on for Gibbs energy as well. And this idea of Hess's law and the idea that we can take any series of steps that lead from the same initial state to the same final state will give us the correct answer is one that's going to be applied a fair bit and quite useful. In this particular case, we're looking at the formation of ammonia from nitrogen and three hydrogen to give us two ammonia. That's the balanced equation we're referring to. I'm going to make a quick note about units here. When we're doing this, remember a balanced equation is really a group unit kind of equation. We could be talking about one molecule of nitrogen and three molecules of hydrogen to give us two molecules of ammonia. We could be just talking about dozens of molecules, but we usually talk about moles of molecules. You may find in your section content and the textbook that sometimes they forget the per mole units at the end of a lot of the answers. I would suggest you try and keep that per mole in there because what you're really saying is per mole of reaction. You're essentially letting people know that you're talking about the molar amounts, not the individual molecule amounts or the dozens amounts. So keep that in mind in your problem solving. But the solution for this problem is essentially, again, as we've said, a variant of Hess's law. So what we're going to find is that the delta S naught for this reaction at 298 Kelvin is going to be the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the products times the S naught for each product. And from that, we're going to subtract the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants times the standard entropy for each reactant. In this particular case, that would end up being two times the entropy of ammonia minus one times, and this is going to be a sum, the entropy of nitrogen plus three times the entropy of hydrogen. And I should probably make that a square bracket. So that's going to be two times 192.5 joules per Kelvin, and again, we're doing this per mole of reaction, per mole of balanced equation, so it makes sense for us to keep that unit in there. From this, we're gonna subtract the 191.6 joules per Kelvin per mole, multiplied by one, but yeah, I'll ignore that, to which we're also gonna add three times 130.7 joules per Kelvin per mole. Whoops running out of space. Do a little bit of math here. I'm going to try and do this in my head. Possibly a mistake, but hey, there we go. So we're going to get 0 0.5181, 385 joules per Kelvin per mole, from which we're going to subtract 191.6 joules per Kelvin per mole plus three times 130.7 is gonna be, okay, let's put a one there, two, uh, nine, three, 92.1 joules per Kelvin per mole. All is running out of room. And so that's gonna be 385.0 joules per Kelvin per mole, minus Let's say, ooh, let's do some math. Seven, three, 18, 583.7 joules per Kelvin per mole. And so that's gonna give me, ooh, looks to be about 198 negative. And let's do the last, little bit, 198.7 joules per Kelvin per mole. We're seeing a negative entropy change for this reaction, which kind of should make sense. We're going from one plus three stoichiometric moles of reactant gas 
to two product moles of gas. There's less gas in the products than in the reactants. Less gas means less freedom of motion. Less freedom of motion likely means lower entropy. And so a negative entropy change for this reaction seems reasonable. Of course, there could be math mistakes, so be careful, but I'm feeling pretty good about this.